all right guys good morning and welcome back to the live this week we are focusing on a hot topic that you guys asked me to um, discuss quite a bit so we're gonna be focusing on today's live training around um, managing cortisol so we're gonna look at the symptoms to look for when you're managing cortisol or trying to manage cortisol <laughs> and then um, <clears throat> then we know that cortisol uh, from past discussions in our lives now if you've missed some of those past discussions uh, just let me know and comment below and ask me to post the videos uh, or the vis video links just uh, just say links below and I will post some of the links for you to go back and, and look at so we're going to be looking at the, the symptoms, so the things to, to be aware of and look for in your body, so creating that awareness, and then we're going to be looking at <clears throat> strategies to then um, help to manage that. So things, habits that you can incorporate into the lifestyle to help reduce that load on cortisol, okay? Okay, so just remember if you want today's presentation, you want the freebie, so the PDF, just say cortisol down below in the comments and I will um, send you off the, the presentation from today's um, live. All right, so we're gonna dive on in. I'm just gonna switch screens for a second. So I have my presentation um, all ready to go. Okay, so cortisol and how to control it. This is super key. Now in past presentations and lives and trainings, we've talked about the midsection body fat. Everybody's arch nemesis, right? So like, <laughs> you like raise your hand. Yes, that's my arch nemesis. Well, there's a reason for that, okay? The midsection body fat or the weight gain in the midsection is a symptom of things that are going wrong in your habits. So the habits are the things that you do continuously every day, week to week, that creates the symptom of midsection weight gain plus there'll be other symptoms of course. But because everybody focuses on that midsection weight gain, they perceive that the weight gain is the problem. But we have to back it up. We got to look at the root cause, the root causes of the symptom, which is the weight gain. So when we look at that, or first to understand, we have to, un you guys have to understand that cortisol is our main stress hormone. Right? It's not the sole stress hormone, but it is one of the main ones. And due to all the different types of modern living, and like I was saying, the habits, <laughs> modern living, <laughs> many people are feeling the effects of having that hormone so elevated that it lays down body fat in the midsection. So <clears throat> some of the key symptoms that we want to be aware of is it's not just the midsection weight gain, it's also things that come up like anxiety, depression, fatigue, gut issues. I know this is always a big hot topic right now floating around in our industry and on the and on social media. But if you have gut issues, you're going to have lots of different problems. So, gut issues are a symptom and they range from bloating, pain, diarrhea, constipation, and food sensitivities. Symptoms also show up from having high cortisol, headaches, 
high blood pressure due to stress. So all these having, if you're having high cortisol, you have, you have high stress, irritability. Okay. Irritability. Yes. Comes from high stress, but it also comes from mismanaging your blood sugar, which correlates to the mismanagement of cortisol. So there's a big connection there. Low libido, mood swings, poor concentration, poor sleep quality. If you hurt yourself or whatever, you get like um, injuries on the skin. If you have like slow skin healing, you know, weakened immune system. Okay, this is a big one. Uh, I have clients who <clears throat> have weakened immune systems and, you know, explaining to them that if you have a weakened immune system, it's a symptom of the things that are happening in the lifestyle, in your habits that are creating this problem. So the immune system is, is, a, is a lowered or a weakened immune system is a symptom of what's happening at the root. So it's bringing, you know, that client back to what's happening at, to cause it. That's your root cause, right? Or your root causes, because there's multiple. And then we look at that and then we say, okay, well, we're going to work on... <clears throat> creating new habits that are healthier to help strengthen the immune system, to help lower the cortisol, to help lower the midsection body fat. And then of course the biggie one that everybody hyper focuses on is the weight gain. So these are a lot of symptoms that come up and what gets super confusing is that a lot of these symptoms also show up in other diseases and other aspects like um you know as an example some some good examples would be i'm just trying to think off the top of my head to use a case study because it helps <laughs> to use a case study um like high blood pressure as an example shows up as a symptom in a lot of different various diseases. Um, also too, like irritability is a big one. So irritability can show up as we talked about here with high cortisol levels, but like I just said, it also shows up with blood sugar problems. So if you're mismanaging blood sugar, you're gonna have mood swings, poor concentration, irritability. So, like I said, that one goes hand in hand, right? And that's a lead up to diabetes. Um, <clears throat> headaches. <laughs> headaches shows up in many problems. As an example, like um, environmental things. So, if you have sensitivities to um, certain smells or you have, um, you have um, allergies even, so headaches can show up if you eat the wrong foods, you know, like, so headaches can show up in many different ways. But the thing is, you know, chronic stress is a very, very, very common thing. So everybody, there's nobody that we, <laughs> that we've never consulted with that doesn't have high stress. And the funny part, and it's not a ha ha funny, it's a, you know, it's a disconnect of how a lot of people just disregard the whole, oh yeah, I'm not stressed. Or they just totally under evaluate how truly overstressed they are. It just becomes the norm. And um, that's a problem because the self-awareness, there's a disconnect between that. There's a disconnect between the reality and <clears throat> what's actually happening. And that's not good because now when we disconnect from self, 
and we're just so used to the current circumstances, then we're missing a lot of different things there that are causing disease in our bodies. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're just going to dive on into some strategies. So when we have the cortisol, when we focus on reducing stress, then we're managing that hormone cortisol much better. So some of the big key things that Coach Penny and I deliver here in the group is we talk about you know, the three primary pillars of our programs. And the three primary pillars are movement mastery, so exercise. We talk about intuitive nutrition. And we talk about um, mental, mental fitness. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about tips to insert into the lifestyle that will help you lower the cortisol. So, you know, your bucket is overflowing, right? So your, your stress, boom, your bucket, okay? It's overflowing. Your body is just under stress. So when we look at doing better habits, we incorporating better habits, we're taking away, you know, the shitty ones that don't support you and cause that stress and we insert better ones, okay? So eating the foods to improve how your body metabolizes cortisol. So some of those foods consist of things like asparagus, blueberries, mango, some whole grains, okay? So we're big on um, absolutely no gluten in the diet. We always put our client, we always say to our clients, you know, gluten free. So, you know, using better whole choices like a quinoa or brown rice, stuff like that. Uh, a variety of greens is super key as it provides a lot of variety of vitamins like B vitamins, which help with cortisol by putting those specialized B vitamins into your diet it can really help you support lowering cortisol. So when we're super stressed, uh, we'll burn up a lot of vitamin C and a lot of B vitamins. And as we know <clears throat> from working with women and client and men, <laughs> women and men for so long that their diets are already very, 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 very low in B vitamins and vitamin C because of the poor food, the poor food quality they're choosing, the high processed food diets, the caffeine, not drinking enough water, like all the things, it depletes the body. So then we have to add better nutrients to the diet. Okay. So things like broccoli, papaya, olive oil that's a healthy fat, preferably organic, purchased in, you know, a bottle, not a plastic, banana, onions, and pasteurized, um, unpasteurized eggs. Okay, now another super key tip um, is sleep. So getting good quality sleep. So how many people can say, yeah, you know, I sleep a good solid eight hours through the night. Not very many people do. And your body needs to repair at night. It's a key mechanism to help lower the stress. So things, you know, like taking magnesium glycinate before bed really helps. Avoiding electronics one hour before bed. So cutting back on that screen time using blue light blockers in the evening. So wearing specialized glasses that, um, you know, reduce or stop the blue light, um, a blue light um, stimulant, stimulus, okay, that really helps. Creating a good, consistent bedtime routine 
And just by these simple tips here that I'm giving you now, this really helps with the consistency of a routine. This is a routine. So going to bed, you know, at 10 o'clock, not going to bed past 10 o'clock on a regular basis, not staying up and watching Netflix or playing on your screen. So reducing screen time one hour before bed, taking some supplements to help you get into that deeper rest which really relaxes the mind. Um, super key is to avoid um, caffeine and alcohol, you know, three hours before bed. If you're a coffee drinker or, you know, you consume caffeinated products, do it in the morning after breakfast. And of course, avoiding uh, nighttime eating. So if you're finding that you're snacky after dinner this is a super this is a super key symptom if you're snacky after dinner then there's things that are happening in your routine during the day that are causing this problem okay so there's habits that aren't serving you that's creating this problem at night so we need to look at that because that's a blood sugar problem. And when the blood sugar is low and then you go to bed, then your cortisol is going to be affected or vice versa. If your, if your blood sugar is low and you eat a bunch of stuff before bed, like sugar, because it's never usually anything healthy, I've analyzed hundreds of uh, nutritional journals and it's never anything healthy um, then what's going to happen is that that's going to spike your blood sugar and it's going to cause a problem now with the two hormones so your insulin and your cortisol exercise exercise within the limits what does that even mean that's different for absolutely everybody so don't take to heart what I mean by that because everybody's individual and individualized programs are super key. Strength training for women and men is super important. So exercising both creates um, the use of cortisol. So if you're often someone who is anxious or has signs of high excess cortisol, so again, like the, all those symptoms that we talked about at the beginning, you may want to avoid or limit like your really high intensity workouts uh, to just like twice a week. But then again, it's relative because everybody's different. So this one's a little bit hard to say, yeah, you need to be doing X, Y, Z because what happens is there's a big imbalance of understanding when to keep inserting your strength training and high intensity activities with, okay, like I also need to balance it with some things that are more relaxing activities. Okay, so some people swing so far to one side that it's just throwing the equilibrium off. So exercise is super important, but understanding where to insert um, exercise with different types of intensities at different times, depending on what's happening inside is important to understand that. And then again, that goes back to knowing what the body actually needs and then balancing that out. Okay, uh, laughter and social time, we tend to kind of overlook this and forget, you know, forget that having laughter and social time is so important and it is a key factor to lowering cortisol. It's a direct, it's such a simple thing to do that can directly help you lower that pot. You know, socializing stimulates the part of the brain that initiates the release of um, cortisol but a cortisol antagonist and that's the hormone that works opposite to um, to cortisol okay so thinking about laughter and social time and you know scheduling that time with you know friends and family and and enjoying it 
especially there's another one that we always say is, you know, family time or spending time with your spouse or your friends or whatever the case is. But in your home, you know, having a sit down meal, not in a rush, not standing over your kitchen counter eating, uh, eating food, but sitting down and, you know, having that time to yourself, if you're by yourself, great. But just chewing and eating and just, you know, relaxing, not playing on your phone. But if you have, you know, kids or you have a spouse, but enjoying that time, no, you know, not playing on your phones, just socializing and being together. Okay, next one, fish oil. So supplementation with fish oil is super key. So omega-3s, fish oil, has been shown to reduce blood plasma levels or cortisol during episodes of perceived mental stress. Fish oil is one of those supplements that we, as practitioners, Penny and I, will recommend as like your ins one of your insurance policy supplements. Um, people will always ask me, you know, what kind of supplements should I be taking? Well, that again, just like exercise is very individualized. It's very dependent upon what a client is doing. Like, what are we working on? But then there's like that small little insurance policy of things where, you know, um, certain supplements should just be part of the lifestyle. So there's like two components that you have to take into consideration. So if there's deficiencies and issues and diseases and diagnosis and stuff going on in your lifestyle, then, you know, supplemental, um, supplements become like, okay, well, we need to look at that and then insert those plans to support you. But then there's also the second part where there's like that, like I said, the insurance policy and fish oil is one of those insurance policy things. So, you know, to have it on a regular basis, to have it in the lifestyle, you know, that's a good, that's good. Same with a, a really good multivitamin. And I say really good multivitamin in quotations with air bunnies because not all multivitamins are one made up the same. Not all brands are good. Um, and I get kind of annoyed because I am a holistic nutritionist. I've trained on supplements and various kinds of supplements for many years. And uh, I know and understand what to look for. So most clients don't, they don't understand. Of course, they just listen to whatever is on, you know, the advertisements on the TV or you go to the drugstore and then you, the pharmacist who again knows nothing about supplements and brands and quality will suggest something or whatever the case is. Um, so that's kind of, again, relative, it's hard. Um, you know, but if you're not sure, just ask. We're here. Just drop it, drop a question in the group, or drop a question down below. <laughs> okay, uh, we have three more things. So ashtawanga is an ancient herb that's been shown to reduce cortisol and feelings of anxiety in randomized controlled studies. Um, there was a significant drop in overall serum cortisol levels after 60 days of ashtawanga use. Um, studies are very interesting. Definitely, this is not a live to be getting into talking about studies. Um, but um, cortisol, cortisol levels can positively be affected by using ashtawanga. <clears throat> and um, it's used in a lot of our various um, protocols that we use um, to help people lower cortisol. So like lots of different protocols around that. And it's not just like, I'm not just referring to myself as a practitioner, but in my community of practitioners who practice uh, writing protocols for people who have high stress, <clears throat> Ashtawanga is one of those one of those ancient herbs that is highly recommended. 
Okay, two more. We're almost done this training. So positive physical contact. Physical contact with someone you are fond of, like a spouse, a friend, a child. Um, physical contact like hugging. Releases oxytocin, which is a cortisol antagonist. Remember up above we were talking about like socializing and doing things with like that consider laughter and social time with friends and family. Well, hugging <clears throat> releases oxytocin. And I was mentioning before that that's an antagonist to cortisol, so it helps, you know, blunt or lower that, that cortisol um, pump out, kind of like settles it down. So oxytocin, great. It's an awesome hormone. So avoiding and limiting foods like re, re, uh, sorry, uh, processed seed oils. Okay, so we talk a lot about... Uh, healthy oils and unhealthy oils we've talked about it here in the free group it's actually a fundamental that i teach inside my coach our coaching programs um, because that's how important it is so processed oils you have to be really careful with those knowing and understanding what's good and what's bad and then refined flowers and sugar that's another one we run like um a sugar challenge every we post it every week because we know how super important it is to like get rid of sugar processed sugar out of your diet so we run that challenge um, as a program here in the group and it's free so when you, you know we post that out every Tuesday so if you see that link just click on it to get your to get your free challenge and you can do the challenge and it's a seven day challenge and it really is an eye-opening um, feeling like to put yourself through that and see what the differences really are. Alcohol is another one and caffeinated drinks. So there's like some four biggies on that one. And then just understanding that these foods can increase the release or slow down our bodies and how we actually metabolize the cortisol hormone so we're actually like blunting that um, that metabolization you know we want to be able to metabolize the hormone and excrete it and get rid of it efficiently because if we're not then that means that that hormone is like floating around in our bodies causing so much havoc so all these tips that I've given you, just to recap, we've talked about um, better food choices. We talked about fruits and vegetables. We talked about better quality of sleep. We've talked about exercise. We've talked about laughter and social time. We talked about fish oil to help with inflammation. We talked about ashtawanga. Um, positive physical contact we talked about oxytocin and we talked about the avoiding and limiting um, certain certain processed foods okay so <clears throat> that concludes what I need to talk about for today and your training so if you have any questions you can park them on down below and remember, if you want today's presentation in PDF format, just write down uh, cortisol down below in the comments, and I'll be happy to send that over to you. All right, guys, until next week, I will see you back here. <laughs> I almost forgot what I had to say. I will see you back here then. Have a great rest of the week, and take care for now.